News that Dwayne Bravo and Kyron Pollard are among 10 players listed as reserves for the 2019 ICC World Cup to be played in England and Wales from the 30th of May to the 14th of July. The full list of reserves reading Sunil Ambris, Dwayne Bravo, John Campbell, Jonathan Carter, Rustin Chase, Shane Dorich, Kimo Paul, Kari Pierre, Raymond, Raymond Reefer, and Kyron Pollard. Interim chairman of selectors Robert Haynes, the former Jamaican West Indies leg spinner, had this to say about uh, these players. The choice of players in the reserve list is to really cover our bases and ensure we have a good balance in the pool of players that can be selected if replacements are required. We think the skill set in this pool is strong with a good blend of experience and upcoming young players who can be ready to contribute when required. Now, joining us on the phone to comment on this development, birthday boy, Joseph Reds Pereira, who turns 80 today. Congrats on your birthday, Reds. Great to be talking to you on such a special day on The Zone. Yes, um, it's nice to reach 80. Um, I'm very happy to, to, to be celebrating. Well, the celebration is all over. It was, it was really a quiet little house party uh, last night. Uh, nobody wants to run a party on a Monday. And I need to share this with one, D D Derek Murray, who's also um, 76 today. And if Lindy Delapena was alive, the great Jamaican footballer, he would have been also a birthday boy today. But um, to your, your question, well, um, I'm getting some mixed mix messages from the selectors. And there is a feeling that they're not sure exactly, you know, what what they are looking for. Will they make any changes? Um, I mean, I, I initially thought, like Lance, uh, I think George was was 50-50 on this. I, I don't know if um, you know we had Maria saying anything when the announcement came, but I would have thought that Paul, who moved the ball so impressively in the Test match here against England, when you look at the Af uh, the Ireland matches, no one moved the ball, and if they were looking for a wicket taker, someone who could take those early wickets, I would have had Paul very high up on. on on the list, maybe the one to monitor. Uh, I see Reefer is right up there to, to, to cover any fast bowling problems. I would have given that job uh, to, to, to Paul. Ambrose has earned um, his, his position. But whether we make any changes, if Pakistan has just made a, a reassessment and made three changes, we just have to wait and see. Well, Mr. Pereira, the addition of Dwayne Bravo. He has officially retired from cricket, from this format of cricket, October last year. What do you think about this addition? Did it come to you as a surprise? Do you think he'll be selected? Um, again, um, a little surprise because initially I gathered that he had said no. This is, of course, no official release coming. But after he had obviously said no when they reached out to him, when they reached out to Narayan. Um, and Narayan explained what was his position. I didn't expect um, Dwayne Bravo's name to, to come up. Now, once he's in the list, um, you, you, you have to be t totally dumb and not to, to feel well in case there is, in fact, a, a need for, for his skills at this time. Um, regarding fitness, I hope that that's all behind him. He had a little hiccup in the IPL. Um, but uh, the, the possibilities are, 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 are there that he could be called in. One of the questions that is constantly, you know, making social media and the headlines is that he didn't play for West Indies since 2016. What is your take on that? Well, I mean, there, there, there are so, so many arguments for and against. Um, didn't play a lot for Trinidad in that period and did maybe commit himself to the shorter format in the game. He did very well in, 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 in the Big Bash. He is highly rated in, in the IPL. So I think there, there were reasons why you could date that time as, as the last time he played. Um, I think then he was maybe a better player th than he is now. I think he is a lot fitter then since the Australian um, operation he had. I think uh, he has been very careful uh, 
to monitor himself. He's very careful about his movements, etc. Reds, do you see this 10-man reserve list as a threat to the players in the initial 15? By that I mean the strength of the reserve list is designed to keep the men in the 15 on their toes. That's how I see it. I'm suggesting to you that that's what they are doing. Do you agree? Well, as a friend of mine said to me this afternoon, the reserve list is, is almost as, as, as long as, as, as the actual official standing squad. Um, no, I, I, I don't think so. I, I, I think that the selectors are probably going to go with their original squad, um, which I think I had read that will, will only be changed if injury, I think um, George, they will go with their original. They'll go with their original squad, unless in the case of uh, of, of, of Lewis, the, he has an injury problem. I think they, they, they will then take that route. But I don't see it as keeping the guys on, on their toes. Um, I, I think the 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 decision is is, is fairly firm that uh, we, we expect them to go with the. Um, with the uh, ori original uh, original f f squad name. And that's partly what I mean, you know, Riz, because what I'm saying is that the 15, I don't see anything that would have happened in the Ireland squad to make any of the guys who were involved in, in the Ireland Tri-Series, rather. I don't see anything from any of those guys to say that they would have played themselves out of the 15. And I don't see any compelling reason or any plausible reason for any man on the 10 of the, the list of 10 reserves to be drafted into the 15. So that's what I, I was really driving at. The list of 10 is just there lurking in the background. But for all intents and purposes, the 15 men named a few weeks ago are the ones going to England and Wales in a few weeks' time. Yes, and in a sense, you, you, you refer back to Ireland, George. Not many of the fast bowlers look the part in Ireland. Now, I do not know if it was the cold conditions. I do not know if it was the slow, grassy tracks. But I think we, we were disappointed more in, well, I mean, the, the batting was all ambrous and, 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 um, and, and, and hope. Uh, we were disappointed with, with, with the bowling. And I, I wasn't happy. Uh, certainly, I was expecting more of Roach in Ireland. So, in a sense, um, the, the, the bowlers did, in fact, di disappointed us. And if there were any possible changes before the final date, it, it, it might have been in the bowling department, which, which look uh, maybe the suspect as, as the World Cup is, is about to, to, to go into its final week. A key point that you've just made there, Reds, and I want to take you up on that because of the 10 reserves named, the press release separated two names from the reserve list, Sunil Ambris and Raymond Reefer. Uh, yeah. Ambris as cover for Evan Lewis and Reefer, they say, as cover for part of the bowling group as, as part of the workload management. Now. In respect to the bowling point that you just made, Reefer played just two games in the Tri-Series and he picked up two wickets. Why would they name him as, as cover when, well, certainly from our perspective, and as you just mentioned, I would think Kimo Paul and Dwayne Bravo, who are also in the reserve list, could also be put forward as, as potent options for a, for a bowling group when they talk about bowling um, workload management. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting here that Raymond Reefer did nothing outstanding in the Tri-Series for them to lift him from the list of reserves to suggest that he would be the one to be there as cover. And he came into the squad, uh, just to further support what you're saying, he came in to the squad um, r rather late. Now, I, I, he's a good cricketer. He's done a lot for Guyana. But maybe at the high level, he's going to come up short. I don't think that he's going to move the ball all that much. Yes, the point you make about Bravo, like Paul, being able um, to, 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 to use the seam to, to, to get movement um, is, 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 in fact, um, a fair one. And I, I think it goes back to... It goes back to the, the fact that we all were surprised that Paul was not there. And I want to take this a little further. 
Uh, I don't know how George is going to react. I have not seen the contractual arrangements for the IPL to say who, who, when you can leave the IPL. I know that Russell and uh, Gale were marquee players, but you know it bothers a, a lot of Caribbean um, cricket fans that so much of the other countries brought their players back, right? Where our players, our key players stayed, and we are now having a four-day camp which started yesterday with our IPL players finally joining those who are coming from Ireland. And you, you, you can ask the question, was that an error? Was that an error? And that question I put to you, George. Well, well, I, I can tell you, Rex, that from my reading of the situation, the players from the IPL who've been brought back by their respective nations are players who had a certain degree of certainty that they were going to go to a World Cup provided they were fit, given the fact that they were part of a set of focused and, 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 and keyed in to playing in an ICC World Cup. Several of the guys who we have in the IPL, given the status quo before the Skerritt administration took office, they weren't thinking that they were going to be a part of a World Cup squad to start with. And so their focus was only on themselves. And I'm sure they would have drafted contracts to benefit their own bottom line and not necessarily what would have happened if by chance they were selected in a West Indies Cricket World Cup squad. So from an organizational perspective and from the players looking after their own goodwill, the West Indies players I think were unique in that regard relative to say the English players or players from other teams who were part of World Cup of ODI units and fully confident that once they were fit, they were going to be a part of a World Cup squad. And so they designed their contract based on consideration discussed with their respective cricket boards. But the, the, the likes of Gale and Russell and Hetmeyer and Lewis and Thomas uh, were all um, already selected for the, 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 the World Cup squad and, and didn't have to worry or wonder if the, 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 they were going to be selected, George? No, man. Remember that the World Cup squad was announced after the IPL was in swing. So the, 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 timing, the, timing, issue there would have the timing issue there would have rendered that consideration, uh, 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 well, perhaps null and void. So the timing was also critical, but I'm just saying that the other countries, based on the organization and the certainty with, with, with which those players treated their World Cup participation, it would have lent itself to a different arrangement compared to what our leading cricketers would have made, even the likes of Gail and Russell, who were confident that once they offered themselves a World Cup service, they would be picked. Most of the players were not sure what would have happened, so it was about working out the best contract for me. I want to ask you something, Reds. I want to ask you something. Yes, please. Of the 10 teams at this World Cup, do you think that the West Indies... Okay, of the 10 teams at the World Cup, if all 10 teams play to their full potential, and that's how you have to assess the teams, are there... Well, is there four other teams that the West Indies is better than? That is a tough question uh, when you look at the, the reality of how we played in Ireland and uh, how, how, you know, Gail, how Gail and Russell and Hetmeyer and Lewis and Thomas may impact. I, I think I want to go back to a point you made in this program where everybody is fairly confident of their players doing well whether it's India, Australia, England at home, or Pakistan, and New Zealand. Um, to use your own words, George, we are hoping, <laughs> we are hoping that Gail will have a great farewell, you know. We are hoping that Lewis stays fit. We are not sure what Hetmeyer uh, will contribute. I mean, no doubt talented, but has he got the discipline um, to, to really put things uh, together? And I, I can go on. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to go back to basically what you said. We are hoping, and uh, right now I'll be happy, George, if we can make the quarterfinal. If we can make the quarterfinal, I feel that the side has, has done extremely well and any number could play after that but those early matches we have a very hard hard draw so well, to well, reds, well, reds reds to make it even more difficult for you remember there are no quarterfinals under this new format it's a straight round robin 
Each team plays nine matches and then you go yeah. to a semi-final. So it's the best of four that it will come down to after the preliminary. So if we're not good enough to get out of the group, which is why I asked that question, if we're not good enough to stand as the top four in the standings after each team has played nine games, we're going to be coming back home. So I take it from what you're saying, my good friend, that you are hoping that we'll be better than four teams at the World Cup, but you're not certain that we are. No, I'm, I, I, I'm not certain. And I think most West Indians, they could be totally honest. Although, you know, in their heart, they're West Indians uh, down to their toe. Um, you know, this is not the Clive Lloyd side. This is not the Bill Richard side. Uh, this was not even the side of 1983 when we might have underrated it in, in India. Um, no, I, I think we, we, we just have to um, do well in the early matches. So we have to start off by beating Pakistan in, in the first match, and that all of a sudden will, will, will bring new hope. We're, we're out of time, but I have to show, throw this one last, this last one at you. I want a short answer. In your time, and you're the best man to ask, is this the weakest West Indies squad that we're sending to a World Cup? On paper, yes. Thank you very much, my friend. We'll talk again before the World Cup starts. Good afternoon. Good, Enjoy good, good.